Hello everybody, and welcome back to the new VR news. As always, I am Mateo311, and this is your one channel for everything VR related. Today, we have some impressive looking low-key game announcements, full VR mod support for one of the creepiest co-op shooters, Phil Spencer slightly changing his opinion on Xbox and VR, Steam VR and Oculus dropping some great updates, and finally, we have one more victim of the coronavirus, the Oculus Quest. Just a reminder, guys, I am giving away a VR system of your choice, so go check out the description for information on that and for additional links pertaining to information in this video. I'm also still running monthly giveaways on my Discord channel. If you end up enjoying this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, leave your comments, and consider subscribing. Alright, let's get into this. First up, in the game news, we got an announcement trailer for the game Mental. Mental is a first-person VR shooter with an insane amount of weapon crafting and customization and some insanely visceral stick figure VR murdering. If all goes well, I will be streaming this game on Friday so you can come check it out live. This game will be releasing on Steam in early access on February 20th. Next up, we have Ven VR Adventure. This game is also coming to Steam in Q2 of this year and it appears to be a platformer similar to Moss, Astrobot, or Lucky's Tale. I absolutely loved Moss and always hear great things about Astrobot, and platformers are completely underrepresented in VR, so I was pretty excited when I saw the announcement trailer for this game. Expect to see some coverage of this in the near future. Next up, we're getting some excellent mod support for VR, and first on the list is GTFO. If you're not familiar with this title, it is a hardcore four-player co-op shooter. It also just so happens to be creepy as hell. While the mod is far from perfect, it does have room scale and VR controller based aiming. Now some of the issues make this more of a proof of concept rather than a truly playable mod, but it does look like the developer is committed to fixing all of these issues. So keep this mod on your radar, come back in a few months, and you might have a great new game to come experience in VR. Moving on to a mod that is fully playable, Lambda 1 VR for the Oculus Quest has received an update that now allows you to play the Opposing Force Half-Life game mod. So you can now play through all of Half-Life 1, Half-Life Blue Shift, and Half-Life Opposing Force on your Oculus Quest. I have already made an installation guide for Half-Life 1 on the Oculus Quest. Blue Shift and Opposing Force are basically the same, but I will include some links for you guys in the description. I played through all of Half-Life 1 on the Oculus Quest, and it is an absolutely amazing experience. Alright, next up, I'm very happy to report that The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners has recently received some updates for all the features we've been asking for. The main updates that I do want to mention are 1. Physical crouching 2. A brightness slider and finally, they fixed the bug where your boundaries may not show up. I was currently suffering from this bug and I can't tell you how many times I have punched the wall while playing this game. I've actually had to resort to using audio notifications from FPS VR in order to play Saints and Sinners. I'm glad to see this excellent game, get these bug fixes and additions added in so quickly. Moving into software updates, Steam VR version 2.0 is being teased across the internet lately. While there's no official list of updates that are on the way, Valve has gone on record stating that they are making multiple consumer friendly changes to the overall Steam VR environment. If you are running the beta branch of Steam VR, you will have already received an updated GUI. Valve is currently correcting all the shortcomings of the current big picture GUI. If you've spent any amount of time in it, you'd know that it really doesn't work perfectly and there are multiple annoyances throughout the interface. Valve's overall plan has just been to continually release small updates, and so far they've all went over really well. It is now much easier to see and interact with your desktop, audio and video settings have been simplified. In true Valve fashion, we can most likely expect the rate of updates to increase on or around the launch of Half-Life Alex. Traditionally, they like to do this, they will hand you something you really want, and then at the same time give out a few other goodies here and there 
there just to keep you nice and excited. Now I have my own personal list of changes I would like to see made, but I wanna know what's on your list. What is the biggest issue you have with Steam VR right now? Now speaking of excellent updates, Oculus Quest Build 13 is most likely already available to you. This does release on a rolling base, so not everyone gets it at the same time, but it's been a while, so go check and you are most likely up to version 13 right now. Now the best updates were made to hand tracking and Oculus Link connectivity, but there is a slew of other fixes in this update and a few other additional changes. When it comes to hand tracking, it will now automatically engage for you when you put your controllers down, and when you wanna go back to your controllers, pick them up, click the trigger, and go right back to using your controllers. There's also stability improvements for hand tracking, and you can now open up a tutorial page and practice your swipes and gestures. Now when it comes to the Oculus Link, Link, you can finally reset your Guardian from the dash while using Oculus Link. This was a major frustration for some people, especially if anything went wrong with your Guardian, having to disconnect, reset it up, reconnect, was just completely unnecessary. The Quest menu bar also has a one button click to connect to the Oculus Link, something that used to take five clicks. Now build 13 does include additional updates, but this is what I found to be the most prominent and what will have the largest overall impact on your day-to-day -day use with your Quest. Thumbs up to Oculus for getting hand tracking on the right path, and it's almost where it needs to be. Our next story is in regards to Phil Spencer ever so slightly changing his opinion on VR for the Xbox. Now currently VR is nowhere on Microsoft's roadmap for the Xbox Series X. And in 2019, Phil Spencer was quoted as saying things like, VR is very isolating, it is not communal, and that's not what gaming's all about. Now right there, that is an argument that I think tons of people would disagree with, as VR is just naturally more social than any other type of gaming. The ability to see physical gestures from your in-game companions is an addition that no flat screen game can ever replicate. And the fans of games like Neos VR or VR chat, it's the most social gaming experience that they've ever had. Now, Phil has recently pulled back a little bit, and his current stance is that he does want VR to succeed, he does want to see it grow, but in terms of Microsoft and the Xbox, it's not anything they're going to consider until it is the next must-have, something that everyone is asking for. Okay guys, we are finally moving into hardware news, and for the first time in months, this is the first weekly news update where I don't have any new tech to really report on. What I can report on is the fact that the Oculus Quest is once again backordered, this time to March, and Facebook is reporting that we are seeing additional delays due to the coronavirus. I do not want to undercut the seriousness of the coronavirus by simply stating that it is slowing the production of the Oculus Quest, as this is currently a serious epidemic. Millions of people are currently under quarantine, and thousands of people are being moved against their will into specialized quarantine facilities. I've been watching a lot of coverage from inside China, everything from Americans who are currently trapped there, to even videos of people in VR chat talking about their personal experiences. The situation is absolutely terrifying, and personally, I don't care what tech is impacted, I'm just reporting on it as it is VR-related news, but personally, I wish for nothing more than the safety and recovery of anyone impacted by this virus. Okay guys, sorry to go into a little bit of a rant there, but I felt it was important to express that during this video, but otherwise, if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and I will see you guys on next time.